to the writer, editor, social commentator, uh, chief executive of Race Off the Agenda and Labour councillor in Queens and Battersea um, uh, about these issues. Maurice McLeod, Assalamu peace be upon you. Good afternoon and welcome to the Drive Time Show. Good, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for being with us. Um, we're speaking about peace, community, trust and accountability today. Um, and uh, really, the first question that we want to ask you is about something that we've been discussing uh, throughout the first portion of this uh, show, uh, in the first half hour, and that is about the stop and search strategy. W what is it that you think about this? What's your opinion and take on this? Yeah, hi. Um, so, uh, obviously, the conversations about stop and search and more generally about policing have been going on for <laughs> for, for forever. Yeah. Um, but 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 my, my opinion of, the, of stop and search, um, I, I know that people will make the argument that you know, it's the only way of, of clamping down on, on street violence, or it's the only way of you know, um, policing certain communities. Um, my argument is that it, it does more damage than it does good. Okay. Um, if you look at the statistics um, for stop and search, you look at um, you know, how many stops there are um, and how many actually result in the police finding something worth stopping someone for. I think it's round about between 15 and 20 percent, depending on which police force you look at. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that means, you know, 80 percent, you know, 75 to 80 percent of, of stops are, um, are pointless. All, all, all that they do is say to, and it is often a young man, say to the young man that's been stopped, you know, we look at you suspiciously. You don't. There's. You're not quite um, able to go about your normal business without without suspicion falling upon you. And when you when you walk around with that, and, and I'm speaking from experience. You know, uh, I'm old now, but when I was when I was younger, um, I I was stopped constantly, constantly. I mean, I I tried counting, and it must be over a hundred times. I've oh, got wow. thirty times. 30 times in a three month period that I, that I sort of documented. So, oh. so I was very, very, very used to being stopped. I never, you know, never cautioned, never obviously had anything on me, yeah. never seen me inside of a prison cell or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm a law abiding person, I'm a local councillor. Um, mm -hmm. But all the way through my uh, childhood, I was stopped relentlessly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 30 times in a, in a period of three months, did you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean that that was specific because I was driving, but yeah. I, I, and it's not, and you know, I, I don't want you to get uh, carried away with the number. You know, and there's nothing special about you know my experience. To be honest, it's it's kind of an experience that a lot of young black and brown people living in Britain have. Uh, you know, that the police that their first contact with the police is when they're being kind of humiliated and asked mm -hmm. to turn out their pockets and they took a criminal. And then years later, people wonder why there's a, as, as, as you were saying, there's a, a, a lack of trust between the, the certain mm -hmm. communities and police officers mm -hmm. because you've got this inbuilt feeling of, you know, oh dear, they, they might be better if they suspect me or something. Um, it's, it's not the way forward. Absolutely. I mean, then what would you say then? Uh, what would be the alternative then? What is the solution here? Because, you know, I mean, um, looking at from police's perspective, and, and, and we had a PC on, you know, who, 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 who we spoke to, and we got insight from their, their perspective. Uh, and so, I mean, what do you, how do you think that we can improve? Because we, we cannot deny the fact that, you know, knife crime exists, and there, 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 is, there, is, there is crime in society. You know, there are gangs and stuff, stuff is happening. So what alternative can, can, would you suggest, you know, uh, what policies do you think that can change yeah. the relationship between the police and you know the the, the black and ethnic my, my, my minority communities? Yeah, well, I, I I completely agree that you know no one should take what I'm saying to, to mean that that, uh, that I don't think um, clamping down on crime is important. Crime impacts our communities more than it impacts other communities, so so it's definitely something that matters. Well, what I would argue, what I would come back with is. Um, you know, it's not been effective. You know, when, when my daughter, my daughter's 30 now, when she was, uh, you know, a, a teenager, there was a space of killings and that, you know, that didn't really get reported on. So, so if, if this is the tactic that the police are using, it's not working. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, I would suggest, and one, well, one suggestion is, is that we have a grown up conversation about, about drugs in this country. Drugs are treated as a criminal issue rather than a health issue. 
Um, all around the world, we're, we're seeing changes in the law that, that, that immediately change the relationship between the police and certain communities. 65% of stops are done for the suspicion of drugs. And that means, to be honest, the smell of marijuana. That's what that means. It's not, we think that person might have cocaine wrapped in their pocket. It's, it's that they, the police suspect marijuana because they smell it. Now, if you take it, and you know, I, I know brilliant police officers down here in Queenstown, like the officers that I work with are amazing. They really are community spirited. But the things they're asked to do put them into direct conflict with the community. Mm -hmm. so, so removing that, removing, removing the incentive to be looking for drugs, you know, yes, by all means, let's do everything we can to get the knives and the guns and the out from the street. Absolutely. Mm. Drugs should be treated like a, like, a, like a medical problem. If someone has a problem with drugs, then they need, they need support. They don't need to be running from the police and, and dealing with, you know, um, going, going underground, which is what happens in training. But what, I, I, I agree with you, but well, you know, someone listening to this program can they not say that our drugs directly linked to, you know, uh, knife crime and all these things? Yes, absolutely. I, I, and I would 100% agree with them. Let's be, let's be totally honest and frank, though. The drugs that are most associated with, the, with knife crime is cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's the cocaine that's being delivered to the middle class dinner parties. That is the, so that's where the money is. The money isn't in the sort of £30 bag of weed or whatever. That's, that's, not, that's not the... So if we're really being genuine that we're going to clamp down on drugs to clamp down on life crime, then we're looking in totally the wrong places. It, it, it was not by picking up a 14-year-old kid and hoping that he might have a little bag of, of weed on him that, that he can sort of mess up his life uh, as it does. You know, we've seen that if you're a conservative... Uh, if you're a conservative uh, um, leadership candidate, doing drugs makes you seem cool and it's something you can talk about proudly in your later life. If you're a black or brown boy who, who's found on the streets, you get to mess up your life. So let's be honest about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I understand uh, where you're coming from, especially from this whole uh, uh, drug battle which, uh, which, which is going on as well. But uh, I... Um, uh, would like to say that I, I disagree with making it legal, uh, but but obviously that's that's another discussion for another day. Um, but another question that we wanted to ask you is in regards to the mechanisms which are available to actually address complaints against the police. What what do you have to say uh, about that? Yeah, I, I think and, and there are moves to do this. I think what, what's needed is that the community needs to know that there's that there's a transparent and accountable way of. Of bringing complaints or seeing what the or checking in on what the police are doing. Now most areas have what's called a community monitoring group for stop and search. I'm on the one in Wandsworth, um, and it's it's a really good way of going. Okay, so this young man who stops here, what was your thinking and what went through here? And surely you know just just knowing that there is some scrutiny. Now a lot of these groups that are sort of underfunded or aren't really given much or aren't given any teeth. They're not they're not actually able to challenge. Uh, challenge officers when you, when they feel improvements are needed in, in, in some of the practices. But it's that kind of thing. If, 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 if police could, could work, you know, I'm very much in favour of community policing. If police could work with communities uh, in, in what would fit, what feels like a more collaborative and, tr and, and, um, uh, and transparent way, then what we end up is, is, is not, not the police against the community, but the police and the community against those who would do the community harm. That's where we need to get to. Um, and I, I fear that, that we're going in the opposite direction. Yes, I appreciate that. And lastly, we do want to ask that, you know, um, what more can be done to make this situation between the police and ethnic minority? I, I, I know you have, you know, you know, you have elaborated and touched upon that better. Because why, why I say that is because a lot of talk, you know, is happening and has happened. But a little, you know, uh, difference that we've seen in society in terms of implementation of those, you know, policies or, you know, the talks that take place. So what is it that you can say, you know, uh, that we need to do in terms of moving forward now? Because discussions have taken yeah. place. Well, 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 they have. Uh, they absolutely have. And I've been involved in a lot of them. But it feels, it feels like in some ways we're still making the arguments. But for the, the press of bit, you know, the, the head of the Met, among those senior police officers in, in the country to say she doesn't believe in institutional racism, that's a problem, that's a worry, because that means if you don't see it as a, if you don't see that it's a problem, you can't tackle it. You can't tackle what you don't believe in. So 
So, uh, um, yes, there's been a lot of talking, but it sadly feels like we still need to convince some people in power that there is even a problem that they need to tackle. I mean, I heard a police officer the other day saying, stop and search needs to be more disproportionate. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, when, when we're still having those sorts of debates, then, then yes, we still need conversation. But what, the, the, the bottom line is, we, we need, like, like I say, we, we, we need um, the realisation that communities are there, are there not to be policed. You know, it, we, we shouldn't look at the police as the, the answer for every social ill. If you, if you see that, if the police is your own soul, then you see everything as a crime. And instead of that, we should, you know, we, we should think in a more uh, creative, and constructive way about about communities. Most well, certainly, most well, certainly. Uh, thank you for that, um, uh, Morris, for, for, for being with us, answering our questions, and sharing some ideas in which uh, we can actually uh, try to better the community, in which the, the, the level of understanding between both the police officers and the public can be better as well, because at the end of the day, that is what we all want. Thank you uh, once again, and we hope you have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you very much, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.